I chose Namha of my birth year for this lesson, because it's very illustrative and contains all cases you may meet during the calculation. Let's get started. First of all, I need a Namha scheme. I created this scheme to simplify the process of calculation and make it more illustrative. I have printed a female version for myself. We start from the identifying the elements for each aspect. It is very easy. I just need to write down the data from the astrological tables. I'll start from the upper part of the Namha. I'll write down all data to this table. I'll use astrological symbols of elements and color pencils for note. I'll remind you that I was born in the summer of 1989, in the year of Earth Snake. This is the basic information I'll need to calculate my Namha. To identify your correct Tibetan year of birth, please watch the previous tutorial. Life element depends on the animal of your birth year. For snake, it's fire. While finding the body element, we consider both element and animal of the year. You can find your body element here. I found body element for a snake. It is wood. Identifying capacity is very easy. Capacity is always the element of your birth year. As my year is earth snake, my capacity is earth. Fortune element also depends on the animal of the year. For a snake, it is water. Okay, I'm done with upper part. Now let's identify Miwa elements. We need data from the Tibetan years of birth table. It contains Miwa numbers we'll use in calculation. Look at upper left corner of this table. It contains an example of Miwa fork. Miwa fork, it is the fork that allows you to identify quickly your Miwas of capacity, body and life. Your birth year is always for body Miwa. Three steps forward is your life Miwa and three steps backward is capacity. Let's apply this Miwa fork for my year. So the same picture. Birth year is body Miwa, three steps forward is life Miwa and three steps backward is capacity Miwa. Now I'll write down these numbers in the table. At last, we need to identify fortune Miwa. It is a little bit tricky, but you learn how to do it very quickly. Look at this table. In the left column, we have animals of birth years, and in the right, fortune animals for each of them. To identify fortune Miwa, we need to find fortune animal right before your birth year. For snake, virgin animal is boar. So let's find when a boar year occurred before my birth year. Okay, it's the water war, 1983. My fortune Miva is 8. Now we have all Miva numbers. Each number corresponds to the particular element. This is the table of match. Now I can identify elements for all aspects easily. Now I am done with identifying all the elements of the Namha. Now it's time to harmonize them. Before we start, let's have a little break. Okay. To harmonize aspects, we need to wrap each of them with color stripes. 
They also symbolize five primary elements. Now let's learn the rules of harmonization. Harmonization is connected with the relationship of the five primary elements. We have the circle of five interdependent elements. They connected with each other clockwise. In this system, each subsequent element is the sun of the previous one. Wood is the sun of water, fire is the sun of wood, earth is the sun of fire, and so on. Just like in nature, water makes wood to grow, wood is required to light a fire, and etc. This sequence is called child sequence, from mother to child. If we move backward, or counterclockwise, from child to mother, it is the mother sequence. If two elements have mother-child relationship, it is considered as harmonious relationship. Also, there can be a friend-enemy relationship between elements. For example, water extinguishes fire, so water is the enemy to fire. These elements are in conflict. Such type of relationship is considered as discordant. And depending on the type of relationship between elements of aspects, we will use child or mother sequence in the harmonization. Harmonization always starts from the life rhombus. Life rhombus always defines the final look of the Olnamha. To create life rhombus, we need to wrap life element with the rest of the elements in child sequence. We start right from the life element. Fire, earth, metal, water, wood. Wood will be the edge element of all Namha. It symbolizes protective energy La. Your La is always the mother of your life. That's how we build protective structure. In the honor of life, the most important aspect in the Namha, we repeat the sequence three times. Now let's go to the minor rhombi. In upper part we will harmonize aspects by comparing them with life. When elements are in harmony, we follow the child sequence. These elements are always neighbors in the circle. I am comparing capacity and life. They are in harmony. To harmonize capacity, we move in child sequence and collect the rest of five elements. Metal, water, wood, fire. Then we go back to wood, the edge element, by the shortest harmonious path. One more example with body. Body and life are in harmony, child sequence. Fire, earth, metal, water. Then I turn back to wood. When elements are in conflict, we follow the mother sequence, from child to mother to get more support and protection. Let's harmonize fortune. It is in conflict with life. I move counterclockwise. Metal, earth, fire, wood. I reach edge element, but because aspects in conflict, I need to make one more step back to mother. water, and only then back to the edge element. Ok, now we harmonize life Miva. We compared it with life. It is in conflict with life. I move counterclockwise. Earth, fire, wood, water. Then back to the edge by harmonious shortest path. Water, edge. To harmonize Miva aspects, we should compare them to life Miva. When elements are equal, it is considered as harmonious relationship. 
like with Fortune Viva. So we move in child sequence and then to the edge. Water, wood, fire, earth. Then back to wood. Important! Look how we define shortest harmonious path to the edge. We skip only one element in a circle instead of two. Fire, wood. Okay, now you've learned about all cases you may meet during the harmonization. Now I'll harmonize the last two aspects without any comments. Ok, now I'm done. I have a note of all color sequences in all around it. Calculation is done. And this is an amha I made with this calculation the other day. In the next video we'll talk about materials you'll need to make an amha. Thank you, share this video if it was useful and see you in the next one.